Everybody, we're gonna talk about so awkward. So awkward. I'm so bad at the intro. We need like a do, fucking. Do you want me to do the saying. intro? I'll do it. Well, I mean, you can Wait. if you want. I mean, I just need we need like a saying. To you start. know, when you you usually say something uh, in the title credits, it says it's whatever, right? It's boktastic or whatever, right? So oh. you, you could do something <laughs> like that, like "Good evening and oh, welcome yeah. to the Dale Show." uh today we're going to be talking about one of dale's favorite topics the bach saga i can't wait to get into this one I'm not only is this my favorite sorry no. not only is this my favorite sub one of my favorite subjects but i'm brand new to it so it's still fresh and got that sweet novelty feel to it it's like a nice glass of coconut nog on a cold yeah. day yeah uh yeah yeah it's uh, it's exciting man i like i haven't I'm not nearly as invested in this whole subject as you are. Well, and the thing oh, I watched a couple of videos. Mm -hmm. I read a few. I read a few online items about it. I went to the Bach Saga family website. Oh wow! And you uh, might ooh. have done more research than me. Okay, well, cool. I'm in for it anyway. And I, I watched an entire video on the language components. Oh really? Uh, yeah. So we can get into that later. Oh for, good, for because I kind of. I kind of skipped the language because I was like, this seems really like involved and I don't want to. So if you researched it, that's dude, good because that's a 45 minute video with, God uh, damn. oh man, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to do a quick bit of side note research while we're, while you're talking uh, okay. a bit, uh, just so that I can see, I can't remember his name. There was a, a guy, he's deceased now. He's passed on. But mm -hmm. he was sort of uh, the one who decoded the language of the Bach family. It's like oh, broken okay. down into the various sayings, but I'll see if I can figure out what it was. Okay, so my research was, I looked a bit at the BachSaga.info. Uh, oh, by the way, BachSaga is B-O-C-K-S-A-G-A -A for anyone who cares, because I was looking for the wrong thing for a bit and it was annoying. Um is that the site you were talking about when you said the family site? Yes, the one that's yeah. insane. <laughs> it is. It's like a schizophrenic person wrote it because it's yes. just all over the place. And it's funny because I was like, I'll go there and it'll make sense and it'll sort everything out because it's like the official Eeyore Box website that has all the recordings and all the stuff. But the writing is just nuts and all yeah, over the bonkers. place. Like it's bonkers. It's everywhere. said. All right, so let's start this really oh, quickly. I'm, I'm not done do, talking about. I'm going to do an introduction. Wait, I want to I'll talk do about the research I did first. I'll do an introduction. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, sorry. I want to get the introduction done before we're ten minutes in. Okay, so tinfoil <laughs> hat, uh, episode five eighty nine, the box saga. I watched that with Andy Rouse, Danunaki Dan, and Joachim Hagstrom, and then Jeff. This is kind of funny because Jeff told me about an infinite rabbit hole episode, and I was like, "Sweet, it's more." But it was the same two guys, same Andy two guys. Rouse and yeah. Danunaki Dan, so that's good. And then I started watching Ancient Apocalypse, which doesn't talk about the box saga, but it kind of ties in with the box saga. And then I watched, started watching this box saga, Welcome to Hell youtube video and i and it was like some guy who knew no eeyore bach and he also just like rambled and talked really quiet and i was like i can't watch this video i wonder if it's the same guy who did the root language video that i watched i think it it probably jim is. chesnar sounds familiar yeah anyway that's the guy that i watched was that jim chesnar guy okay do your intro okay wow what uh, what episode are we in wow god damn it You're 22 so Welcome to episode 22 of The Dale Show. Today we are discussing the Bach saga and root language, and this is going to get very interesting very quickly. I'm your co-host, Jeff Gaucher, and today our host, Dale DeRuder, will take you on a magical journey through the Bach saga. Ooh, I like it. How was that? I like it a lot. That's good. Um, the funny thing was, after we were shitting on the boxsaga.info website for being all over the place, we kind of just were all over the place. So <laughs> I'm sorry in advance. I'm going to try tighten it up because this whole subject is just all over the place. And the two episodes of the podcast that we listened to, the tinfoil hat and the infinite rabbit hole, the guys were kind of just saying 
aspects of the box sagas they're yeah. going. So what I tried to do was I tried to get it in sort of a narrative start to finish, like sort of like a linear form cool. so that we could understand it more. And I'm starting to think that this is probably going to be two episodes. I thought, I thought that before we even started. It's so big. <laughs> and it was so intimidating. Like, this is one of those episodes where I was like, I want to do it. And I just kept having the fear of not covering it enough and it just yeah. being too big and to take a bite out of. But actually, once I got the linear time thing going, I was like, okay, okay. now I can handle it. So... I'm not going to set a part where we're going to break to begin with, but sure, let's get I'd imagine. It really yeah. So it's going to be like, it's not okay. So we're going to break this into two episodes. I don't know if it's, it's definitely not going to be part one box saga background and then box saga timeline because box saga background won't take a full episode. Yeah. And in my opinion, it would be kind of a shitty episode if we just talked about the background when the interesting thing is the actual box saga. It is. It is uh, muy you need caliente. You need <laughs> yeah, yeah, you spicy. <laughs> uh, we need yeah, you need that you need that background though to like understand mm -hmm. where it's coming from. And just mm -hmm. like I, I don't know if you want me to touch on this now or if you or if I should touch on it a little bit later. Um the I'll touch on it later. It's fine. Okay. Also, I, I, I'll get you all greased up and then just disappear. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna my note. I took notes on the two podcasts and some from the ancient apocalypse, and then I kind of very little Wikipedia reading will happen. But what? What kind of note, what kind of episode is this? I know, right? <laughs> I do have some. I looked up like some specific um definitions. Like I looked up Ragnarok. Yep. Because that's one of those words that gets thrown around. So I just wanted the official, official Wikipedia meaning. And all my notes are in point, point form. So I'm going to go through them. Feel free to interrupt me, Jeff, if you want to add anything. Sure. And it's going to, I think it'll, I think it'll go smoothly. I, I feel guess, like it will. I hope I it think, will. I think I remember the thing that I wanted to sort of disclaimer about before we even start this podcast. Is that we don't believe this to be true like well, whenever yeah. i tell people about it their eyes glaze over no that <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a huge component to most of the podcasts here, yeah at the dale show mm -hmm. um no i think one of the things i wanted to touch on because it was something that came up uh with something i mistakenly did on twitter a little while ago um but it was there, what we're going to be talking about in this episode uh is based heavily on uh sort of nordic mythology and nordic mm. creation and a lot of that stuff currently in politics within the sort of where we the the zeitgeist of where we are currently at as a society um there's a lot of talk about uh like racist groups and white supremacist groups that are tied to like north norse mythology or they use north norse mythology uh, oh are you talking imagery? about the sons of odin? like the sons of odin and like we talk and we like we talk about this root language and this odin and it's very icelandic it's very scandinavian it very much comes up from that side of the world and we just wanted to clarify that like this is this is like the this box saga piece is like the start of creation of humankind from the perspective of the of like white nordic folks so it's mm -hmm. not that we're inherently reporting on racist things or talking about racist things it's simply that that has been sort of conflated into racism not everything north uh icelandic or nordic or uh or in that vein is necessarily racist. We're simply talking about it from that perspective. So I just wanted to like kind of make that clear before we started, because it'd be super easy for somebody to go, oh, you're talking about Odin, you're talking about the sons of Odin, you're total racist, like without even putting any thought into it, because that's the that's the current discussion. Yeah, and the funny thing was a lot of people, like some Nazi, like when we did the uh, cult yeah. beliefs of the Nazis, a lot of them cite myths like this as why the um aryans are like the, the superior most race. advanced race and stuff we're doing and air quotes for those of you listening yeah. we're doing air quotes right now <laughs> the, like yeah what jeff, <laughs> what jeff is saying because part of the box saga uh points are points supposits i guess you could say supposits that the white 
North Americans are the most advanced society, but there's a reason for that. And we'll get to that. Yeah. As so just bear on. with us as yes. we go through the saga. Yeah. yeah. This is a heavy topic. It's interesting. And, uh, and it's, and it's quite, uh, it's quite a unique perspective on the creation of people. So mm-hmm. that, that's just my take on it. So we'll see how, what Dale has to say. Yeah. About um, as we go through. Dale's pouring an okay. apple cider. I am pouring more <laughs> apple cider. Sorry if you could hear that. And that made you want to go pee. So <laughs> I already went before we started. <laughs> All right, let's get right to it then, shall anyway. we? Uh, so what we're talking about today, I already, we already talked anyways, it's the box saga or Van, Vinamoinen, Vinamoinen, which is definitely not how you're supposed to pronounce it, <laughs> but that's how it's spelled. It's Vinamoinen with a bunch of umalats mythology. Uh it's He's not reading first, from yeah. Wikipedia today. He's not reading no. from Wikipedia today, but he is mispronouncing things. So we're yeah. cool on that. Right I'm now. reading from my notes. So <laughs> yeah, totally. There'll be like points when I'll be like, oh, that's not a full sentence. Uh, um. <laughs> Go ahead. Dylan. So yeah, I, I just wanted to say that I had never actually heard about the Box Saga or the Voin and Vine and Neumann mythology. I'd only seen like, because it matches up with a bunch of Nordic stuff. So I, of course I've heard of that. And like, midsummer and stuff i've seen stuff about how like vikings and people who used to believe in that mythology would operate so i'd known it from that point of view but i never knew box saga was a thing until i heard about it and then started researching it and then it just seemed like it was fucking everywhere and encapsulated everything and one of the reasons why i'm so horny for the box saga is because it feels like it encapsulates everything and then you could just get out your red yarn like i um like i said ancient apocalypse ties in that's graham hancock's new show on netflix which actually got like got put up after we started researching yeah it 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 totally did it showed up like last week kind of kismet because it leads right in because his whole theory well, okay i'll get into it later otherwise we'll start jumping around <laughs> it's so red string yeah. to, t- to tie up this uh, podcast so you yeah, can figure out what we're talking about. it's so tempting to jump around with the box saga yeah. because it talks about so much different stuff like those guys did in the podcast i do yeah before we get started i was gonna point something out at the end but i want to point out something at the beginning because the reason those guys were on two different podcasts was because they actually I think I deleted it oh they have a this thing called the roots of creation podcast where it's they're going through the whole box saga in like a more expanded view and they're not going to try cover it in two hours and be like totally (laughs) (laughs) overly ambitious like we are so if you want if this interests you which it will promise you can Guaranteed. go there and listen to them talk about it. I haven't checked out that one because like I said, I listened to two episodes with them. So I didn't want it to just be like me simping for these guys more than I already am. <laughs> nope. Dale, number one fan. Dale yes. uh, Danudaki Dan, what's your name? Where you live? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dale just accidentally doxes two other podcasters cut out of pure lust. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and this is the story comes from Finland, fin, Finland. I don't know why I said it like that. And it's hand, <laughs> it's handed down by oral tradition, but um, and it's about like this hidden war between Christians and heathens. But that happens later on. I don't know how much of that specific thing we'll get into, but it's um, it's based on the Swedish alphabet where every letter has a meaning, which is called the root language, and that's what Jeff was talking about. <laughs> on the box oh and this is this is an example of how the box saga.info site is kind of annoying because i was like oh i'll just put in a quick meaning like definition of what the root language was and this is what they had written on the website tell let me know if you think this sounds crazy the root language is the matrix on which the box saga is constructed the root is as you will find out when getting to know the saga better as rigid as mathematics 
and in a similar manner to how mathematics produces the most awesome graphics while describing a certain reality. So can Root spin the most fantastic story imaginable. And the beauty of it all is that it is the story of our ancestors and therefore our very own story. So that didn't explain what the root language was <laughs> at all. It just said that is fucking awesome because it's like math because it makes graphics, which I don't anyways. So, okay. I could, I can actually hop in on this one a little bit about the root language. Yeah, do it. So bro. if you're familiar at all with sort of Nordic heritage, um, there is uh, Yggdrasil, it's the tree of life. And this is where the root language spawns from. Uh, funny note, our old drummer, Barry, in one of my bands had a, a Yggdrasil tattoo on his, on the inside of his arm. He's Nordic. Uh, so anyway, uh, the, um, the root language is basically, and so it's drawn as a circle with an inner language and, or with inner words and outer words. And I can't remember exactly how it works, but basically you start at the North and you work your way around and the, yeah. it sounds, it's like, ooh, in, an, dun, in, like this. And it goes around the circle and it tells you what everything is. One is the sun, one is the, and then the moon is like a, the, on a polar opposite across. Mm -hmm. And there's like, you know, and, and water and fire and wind and people and human and God and all this stuff, like all the way around. And then you read from the North to the south around the circle and it tells the story of creation of the humanity of mankind and it encapsulates like everything all at once oh so i have an example of that yeah oh you do okay great yeah so um the beginning it begins with e a b c yeah and but those letters what they're called is like e is inside so it's like yes, a right. is called asser and b is castle yep. and c is to cut so it's like as you read the alphabet it goes inside Asser castle was cut yeah so that's basically how the alphabet tells the story of what happened with this box saga i do want to say that all this stuff comes from eeyore bach yeah it's like so, all the root language and everything comes from him that video that i watched so this guy jim chesnar who no longer is alive uh has done a series of videos about the box saga the box saga he did know your bach personally who your yeah, bach isn't even his real friends. name they're super good super good friends the video on youtube is uh you can just search box saga hyphen root language by jim chesnar and uh it's he it's it's the wildest 30 minutes of of an explanation <laughs> that you'll ever watch but like it was totally worth it it was it was a very interesting way to see mm -hmm. how an initial language was constructed from very few pieces of communication. Uh, yeah. Bits. And it's funny because all of this stuff, like you watch all these videos and it's like trying to make sense of a drunk person is what I found it like. So uh, that's why I'm kind of like patting myself on the back for managing to hard. construct a narrative for this whole thing. Yeah. Um, and another, it's loony. Uh, like it's hard, it's a hard yeah. 30 minutes to watch. Yeah, it makes sense in the end, but God, you got to stick with it mm -hmm. to the end in order for the payoff. Like the payoff is in the last twelve seconds of the of the of the <laughs> video. Like no shit, you go through 30, yeah. like thirty minutes and ten seconds, and then the last twelve seconds is like, oh shit, that makes sense now. So yeah, yeah. and the podcast as well, the two episodes, Same. they'll yeah. just be like, they'll just say like what point form things about Box Saga in different orders, and so one of the things they said about the root language was it was a system called Alphurnus Betten, yeah. which means the rhyme of the Allfather or rhyme of the elves. And every letter is comprised of either part or whole of the ring or pole, which Correct. was like what Jeff was talking about, the two rings or whatever. And then there's the two, 22 letters in the ring is based on the sweet swedish or finnish alphabet or yeah, those are based on this alphabet it's, no, it's that the most mm -hmm. he, he says it in the video the most closely the most closely related human language is swedish right now mm -hmm. swedish, that, that relates to that uses all those sound formats yeah and so yeah. do you want to say anything else about the language no go for it that's, that's no i'm ready to move on but move on i don't that, want so you no, it's, the root language basically comes from yeah. that uh, it, the, is, is where this whole thing starts. Mm -hmm. So the, the root language, everything is built off of that. And the story that you're about to hear Dale recant, that is the Bach saga, 
mm -hmm. is derived from the the cyclical root language. So I'm yeah. glad you started with that because now I don't know anything else except for what I heard on the podcast. So you oh. can go, you can start. Okay. Well, like the stuff about stuff about hell being. Anyway, I'll, I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, so, spoilers. Uh, yeah, so I don't. I like we could talk for hours about, about just the language. root language. Yeah, that could go for and because it like talks about what other stuff means and pulls all these things together. But I didn't want to get too into the weeds because. Like I was telling Jeff, I didn't really watch the video. And even though he watched a what forty-five minute video explaining it, it I still don't really get the whole thing that well. Yeah. Oh, there's also a book written on this by E. R. Bach. So I didn't read that. Full disclosure. Sorry, confession time. But <laughs> I didn't feel like I had enough. To, like I was already like all over the place, and I was like, this is way too big. So I was kind of stopping myself from getting too into it otherwise it would just we would sound like those guys who are like oh here's a point about this and here's a point about this so oh okay so, okay just a quick note about eeyore bach himself uh he wasn't actually born eeyore bach uh his originally his name was Bror holger spadlin uh and he also died back in 2010 uh, at 68 years old. So E.R. Bach is no longer with us. Uh, Jim Chesnar was his friend and the sort of last person that carried on this language who died a few years ago or who they carried on this story who died a few years ago. So I don't know if there's anybody who's related to E.R. Bach who's still alive. There isn't. He's, there, he's, he's the, the last, last remaining. To the right? Yeah. So so I thought that was kind of weird and trippy. Oh, you well, want to hear some other? So oh, some of the Wikipedia reading I have is the wikipedia entry on eeyore bach and the character is just as weird as yeah, the story just as weird as the story so the story was given to the world in 1984 by eeyore bach because him being the last bach in a certain line so what had happened in like 987 or something they started giving like okay so Okay, I'm going to just... It was already I'm, frazzled. He's it's just so, started. He's already it's frazzled. It's so all over the place. Yeah. So what had happened... Okay, I'm actually, I'm not going to tell you the not, the not what happened in 987 because that comes up later. Okay. But so in 1984, this guy, Eeyore Box, like, guys, have I got a fucking story <laughs> for you? And everybody's like, okay. And he's like, it's actually the mythology of Van, Van Amoynen. And everyone's like, okay, what's that? And then he's like, writes this book and gives it to people and i can't even imagine what people in 1984 thought of this so it's like um yeah i mean or, i don't know much about 1984 because we're kids but i'm like <laughs> what i do know about 1984 is there's a whole lot of cocaine and a whole lot of affluence at that time in history oh, yeah. and there was that book 1984 and that book 1984 by that George was supposed yeah by it's supposed to be when the world turned into a whatever yeah we're not gonna get into that well, let's not get into that we've got enough so, book to tackle right yeah. now so uh according to box autobiographical the box saga he was born as a result of an incestuous relationship between sea captain nut victor boxstrom 1860 to 1942 who would have been 81 years old at the time and his daughter Rhea, 42 Nutt's only son had been killed in the Finnish Civil War in 1918, and this was a desperate measure to continue the male line and bring the extensive family saga about heathen times to the public eye. So just reading that, maybe the reason that Eeyore Bach was the last Bach is because maybe since he was born of an incestuous union, he might have been sterile. That's me just fully guessing. There's nothing in any notes about that. But that just occurred to me. For clarity, uh, the name is not Nut, it's Canute. Oh, that's is it? That name's, that's how that name's pronounced. It's Canute. It's a traditional, a traditional Nordic name. I thought everybody said Canute was fucking with me and like no, it's Canute. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's okay. okay. Canute Victor Boxstrom died shortly after Eeyore's baptism, one month after his birth. Consequently, he was adopted by Rhea's husband, Bror Gustav Bertel Svedden. Now, Broar Gustav Bertels Fedlin is, needs, is, yeah. needs to get a fucking award for letting his wife have a baby with her dad and then raising it as his own. This guy's yeah, I mean, a saint. 
I don't know about that, but uh, or, <laughs> we'll, we'll give him some kind of award. Like, would you do that? If your 42 year old <sighs> wife had a baby with her 81 year old dad, I'd be like, and I'm fucking out. Bye. Somebody, I don't know, man. I, maybe I would. Somebody's got to raise that kid. Yeah, but not me. At 42, that's like me. This age. That is like you. That is literally you at this age. Uh, It'd be like if I fucked my dad and had a baby. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I'd be not terrib- terrible with the whole situation, but somebody's got to raise that kid and take responsibility for it. It might as Dude. well be me. Who's the band for that job? It's me. <laughs> the best would be like, fast forward five years, fucking Eeyore like smashes a toy and then Ray's like, oh, why weren't you watching a roar? And he could be like, I don't know. Maybe because he's inbred. That's why he smashes his toys, Rhea. Oh, where's your dad to take care of him? I'm curious <laughs> about that situation. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if you wouldn't have fucked your dad, you wouldn't have dad, temperamental you wouldn't have issues. Problem. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely why it's going to take us two hours to get through this. <laughs> Maybe if you stop talking to your dad, you wouldn't have this much problem. <laughs> I don't know if this ruins the validity of the it whole does box ruin aisle, it. it completely but killed it. Anyway. It does, it does allow for some good side jokes. Yeah. Uh, so to learn the story, he said he would sit two hours every day with his mom and his sister from the age of seven to 27. Damn, that's a lot. It looks like homeschooling. It's not that really that different. Yeah. Wait, was that his mom and his sister? Was Same okay? Person, I read that way. note, <laughs> Based and on it didn't occur history, to me that that, that was one person. Yeah, it might be the same person. <laughs> yeah, sister, mom. Yeah, so he is from the old Finnish king line that has been in hiding since the Catholics made their way to Finland because they wanted to wipe out all the heathen kings. And I think this is what happened in nine eight seven. So it's like they stopped just having this information in a library and went into hiding and then just passed it, it on oral orally. tradition. Yeah. Yes. The box saga has a lot of double meaning things like hell means health and devil is the wheel, the veal. And this is from the Catholics going in and trying to de- demonize pagan culture. So, okay. That's the background. Language is going to come up on this again, but yeah. That's yeah. Totally, yeah. So there'll be a lot of things like hell and Helsinki and all that stuff, where it's like hell was actually a good thing because it's like your inner health. And this is like the root language stuff. Yeah, It works into this. Like they have like something where it's like, Oh God, I don't even, I shouldn't have even brought it up, but it's like, they talk about about how a health is health and then what to do with health and all this stuff in this root language. Yeah. And it's, it's story about that. Let's move it's, on I can help. understand. Like, it took this guy two hours a day for 20 years to, learn to the hear story. the whole story. So you can imagine it's a little bigger than we're going to cover on this podcast. Yeah. So before we get going with the narrative of what the box saga mythology is, do we need to talk about the background at all anymore? I think we're Which good as long as you, like, are you including the part about Helsinki and like the... Yeah, the, that's the, all going to be included. Okay, then we're good. Yep. Um, that's all we need to go on. Yeah, we'll throw in some more Eeyore incest I mean, jokes. More incest <laughs> jokes later on, though, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So the whole... Now we get into the mythology and this is the good part. So we're leaving yes. incest boy and his tail... <laughs> And now we're going to focus on his tail, which is amazing. And I hope I don't get crucified so, by all the Eeyore box saga. Like Tail is T-A-L-E. He wasn't talking about an incest boy with a tail, a T-A-I-L, <laughs> for the record. Which is also, just want to clarify that really quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So the box saga starts 50 million years ago. Five the Earth, zero. The Earth wasn't tilted on its axis like it is now i think it's like uh 23 degrees yeah. tilt of its axis so there were no seasons back then and the whole surface of the earth the north especially was a like a tropical climate yeah. so the north got 24 hours of sunlight a day which as a side note i wanted to ask you about this jeff because i don't think that that would make sense unless as the earth's going around the sun if it's a little lower then the north would get 24 hours of sun and then there'd be some black on the south side of the earth because you know what i mean 
Yeah, there'd be full black on the south side of the earth. Because it would be still, yeah. it'd still be an orb. So you'd yes. think because it's spinning. Okay. So even then on your, when you're talking about your axis and you're talking about positions of objects in space, uh, to say it's under or lower doesn't really make any sense either. It would be mm -hmm. a tilt or a position within a three-dimensional sphere. Anyway, oh, yeah, I've meant in relation it's to its circular orbit around yeah, the sun. Yeah, I mean, it would, be, it would be spinning. So here's your sun, which is the ball of the earth, would just be spinning like this with that part facing it the entire time. That's all happening. it happens currently too, right? Like that's what it happens now, but it's just in a different location. So all they're saying is that it's fun. Uh, the North, because they, they talk about this about how the North Pole shifts over time. Anyway, we'll get to that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Basically, North, the North had, Pole was in where Sweden is right now. Yeah. So it had the area. North had a tropic climate. Yeah. And then I pulled this from the boxsaga.info site. In this time that was called paradise, people lived in harmony with nature laws and powers. At that time, the Earth's axis stood perpendicular to the sun. For this reason existed a land at the North Pole with a diameter of 250 kilometers, where the sun never went down, but instead created a golden ring around the horizon. This ringland was called Odinma, or Sunland. The center of Odinma was known as Hell which is now Helsinki, built on seven hills and seven islands. It was the cradle of humanity. The planet was divided into ringlands, which all had center connected with hell. Inside Odinma lived the Asser. In the outer ringlands lived the Venur. Was it Venur or Venir? Venur. It's Acer, Venur, and Uden. Oh, I didn't get the Uden in there, but uh, yeah. Uden. So in the outer ringlands lived the Venir, who were the descendants from the Asser. So what this means is they had their city structures as the middle circle. They had concentric circles with the middle being the Asser lived there. And that was all like the Kings and stuff. And they yeah. would rule over everybody. And it was a caste system. So as each circle went out from the center, it was a lower class until you got to like, I don't know. They never said, they don't say where, they don't tell you the first three or four rings. They don't go. Yeah. They don't say there. when the veneer started as opposed to the Asser, but it was like, the veneer are normal people and the ass are like the good, like the, high the kings or whatever. Class. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, 50 million years ago was the first Ragnarok that tilted the world and started the ice age. So I looked up what Ragnarok meant just so we could briefly describe that for anybody who doesn't know. In Norse mythology, Ragnarok is a series of events, including a great battle foretelling the death of numerous great figures, including gods, Odin, Thor, Tyr, Friar, Heimdall, and Loki, natural disasters, and the submersion of the world in water. After these events, the world will rise again, cleansed and fertile. The surviving and returning gods will meet, and the world will be repopulated by two human survivors. These human survivors are Leif, meaning life, the life of the body, and Lif Prazer, meaning life's lover, or Lif's lover of life zest for life type of deal sometimes anglicized as lif and lif thrasser female and male respectively so this is kind of like the adam and eve but it's reversed because the first human is eve and then adam's her lover type of deal the two humans are told to survive the events of ragnarok by hiding in a wood called hodominus holt and after the flames have abated to repopulate the newly risen world risen and fertile world <clears throat> so like ragnarok is basically like an apocalypse and what they're saying is it can mean different types of apocalypse yeah apocalypse. so there's like the flood is considered the ragnarok war um the when the comet struck the earth and killed all the dinosaurs that would be considered a ragnarok so basically ragnarok is just like an eve and Oh, what it's was like that? A, it's like a rebirth. Like it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a mass destruction or a mass a mass casualty destruction followed by a mm -hmm. rebirth. It's like an out extinction level event from a yeah. deep impact. That's what there I was saying. <laughs> extinction level event, good, good deep impact <laughs> reference, Dale. Nice job. Yeah. We don't tie that in. It's finally served me. Everybody <laughs> wants to bring up Armageddon, but everybody forgets everybody, about everybody deep forgets impact. about deep impact. Yeah. <laughs> title of your sex tape. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> 
So what they don't say annoyingly, they don't say in the box saga. I mean, maybe if I read the book, it would. But what happened was all of a sudden the tilt of the earth, the earth just tilted. So Helsinki, instead of being at the North Pole, it's now in its current position, which is on what, like the 12th parallel or whatever. But anyways, it's not straight up anymore. It's like bent over like that. And so, (laughs) hey, and then the guys on the podcast are like, and when this happened, the entire galaxy shifted. And then they get into like some esoteric stuff about how, like, if you think about it, you would have had your whole astronomy and stuff that was from the earth being straight up and down would have had to be changed right everything changes location because it's in a different position in the sky yeah. the earth is tilted on its axis slightly yeah mm-hmm. and when the earth and when the earth tilted that's when we got the modern climate like we got seasons but that's also started the ice age and so when this happens all the land around helsinki froze all the land is ice. All land is Atlantis. So, oh, here we go. And the uh, yeah, tinfoil hat time. Yeah, and so this is actually when when I was listening to this and I heard that on the podcast, I was like, boink, because <laughs> anytime you bring up Atlantis, you've got my full yeah. attention. They and this is full hard. <laughs> and I'd never even thought about it this, but this way, but it makes so much sense. So. What happened was all the land east, all the land around Helsinki turned to ice. So we're talking Poland, England, Ireland, Scotland, yeah. to be like ham-fisted about the analogy. Yeah. So as that's all freezing around it, you'd be like, <laughs> you might be asking me, Dale, why didn't Helsinki freeze? Well, that's a good question because Here it should have. But the reason it didn't was... I don't know if the, if they had claimed this was some sort of like divine intervention or just like a super random coincidence that the one city that had all the rulers in it that had tilted down actually stayed thought out because there was a Gulf Stream coming from South America and floating up over the ice. And then it would go through the Atlantic and up into the Gulf of Finland, where it would like kind of just swirl around there. And since the warm air was trapped in the Gulf of Finland, kind of doing this figure eight and stuff, it kept the area warm and it melted all the area. So what the, cause a lot of times they're saying that this is when Helsinki got cut off from the rest of the world. And right. one of the reasons why there wouldn't be like, a channel for them to get out along that Gulf stream was the warm air kind of went over the ice without stopping. But when it hit Finland, the Gulf of Finland, sorry, which is just South of where Helsinki is now. And the swirling would mean that the air never fully cooled off because as it would swirl around and cool, more warm air would go in. Yeah. would more would add to it. Yeah. Yeah. So the people were living behind this giant ice wall. And they were secluded from the rest of the world and it caused them to go through stages of innovation that the rest of the world didn't. Mm -hmm. And what they were saying about um, the, they were saying like the Asser were stuck inside of this ice because they were in the Helsinki Ringland kind of ruling everything and all the other Ringlands around the world, they kind of got frozen over and like lost their technology and stuff. Yeah. Harder to develop cool tech when you're covered in ice and snow. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm too fucking cold to create wheels right now. Yeah. As the veneer, the people not in the Helsinki city, as they were like moving south away from the ice and into the cooler regions around the equator, they all lost their technology and they kind of basically turned into Stone Age humans. Yeah. And since they were living at different parts of the earth. And now that the earth has seasons and different climates in different areas, this is when people kind of developed their 10, the 10 different races, because the box saga keeps referring to the veneer separating into 10 different races. Right. And they don't say exactly mention what they are. Yeah. Yeah. But you could just imagine. You just guess, right. Or you can put it continentally 
how the different races sort of shifted over time, which is sort of yeah. what they're getting at, I guess. And it's kind of annoying because you always have to tiptoe about around this yeah. because of racism and stuff. But you would obviously have like South Americans, Africans, Mongolians, and Asians, and South Asians, and like Africans, the Sacks North and Americans, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, and this is how white, and this is what Jeff was talking about, how like we, <laughs> yeah. when we're talking about racism, <laughs> because, yeah. okay, um, basically this is how white people are made because. So, yeah, you sorry. can put it to like, this is the perspective of the creation mm-hmm. of white people, essentially, is, is what, yeah. you're, what you're looking at. So I kind of came up with like a little bit of an explanation with this, like scientifically. Oh, okay. So I know people don't. So this is me tiptoeing around it. And I wrote it down, so I'll just read my own notes. So Asa are still in the ice and turn white with lack of sun. This is how white people came into being. They lost the melanin in their skin to let more vitamin D be absorbed from the lower amount of sunlight. Melanin is a defense mechanism to stop the absorption of UV radiation from the sun. This is how tans work. You get more sun or UV radiation on your skin. Your skin develops more melanin or pigment to block it out. They would have also developed blue and green eyes since blue and green eyes are more light sensitive and they have less light up there because they're in the north. Yeah. So this is why air, they, when they talk about Aryans in the racist way, they have like white skin and blue eyes. That's basically where it comes from. And one of the reasons they say that Aryans are more advanced or whatever is because they're locked up behind the ice and they're still developing technology at a quicker pace than the rest of the world. And not even that it's quicker. It's that they never lost the pre ice age technology that they had. Yeah. And then since they're in this locked off society and behind this ice wall, they, they had this big, huge map drawn out. Uh, fertility rights that was all based on like this mathematical system so that you wouldn't so let and the way they explained it was there was like a chain like a chain of who was breeding with who and then it would go down and then it it was still built on a caste system so you go down through the caste system so you wouldn't have just like the top royals just doing each other it would be like there's this mathematical way to like kick it down one yeah, to ring keep or whatever. Rules solid or whatever. And then like, as when it got to the end, then it went back up and started. Up, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, it's so you it's don't crazy. fuck your dad. <laughs> that was the whole like, point. Yeah. Like Canute did. Like Canute did. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Wasn't there like a super famous polar bear or something called Canute? <laughs> I think so. Probably. It's a really, it's like, it's, it's a really common like Nordic name. It's, that's funny it's yeah. that like john it's yeah it's john. john it's john it's john okay. canoe, canoe john yeah john and oh and we i didn't really get into it but like the way they talked about sperm back then it was like this gift from god and it was like a seed and they like because oh, they're like talk, i don't want to talk about this part so the one part of that podcast that i listened to was <laughs> the worst the worst part of the podcast the list, i don't want to talk about the semen okay <sighs> Basically, what they were saying was... <laughs> Don't even, are you going to talk about this part? No, I'm not. I'm just going to okay, say humans God. were treated like plants. Yeah. So they figured, like, that's how they dealt with how much sun they need and stuff. Because it's like, you know, like, we live in Vancouver, so we get the seasonal affected depression disorder. These guys would have had that in spades back up there. So they had to, like, the way they looked at it was humans are plants. Plants need sun to live. So humans need sun to live. So they would, like, I don't know, maximize their exposure to the sun and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So they had this closed off society where everything was regulated, which would lead to stories of Lucifer. Fuck. Yeah, here just, we go. This was me keeping my notes and not, keeping <laughs> not, not all messed up, but uh, yeah. So the society was locked off, but eventually every once in a while, someone would want to leave like Helsinki and go over the ice to, the veneer or the stone age humans and stuff so they're kind of saying that maybe this is where like lucifer came from and the egyptian god Ra, because they were like like lucifer yeah they're similar yeah because lucifer like left heaven to supposedly like one of the ways that they like satanists believe that lucifer actually 
helped Eve by giving her the apple instead of like cursed her. Yeah. And so, like I was saying before, Atlantis is not a city in this respect. Atlantis is just referring to Area. the time period of when Helsinki was behind this ice wall and the ice age. Yeah. Um, and the Asser were separated from the veneer. Did we say veneer? I always want to say veneer, but it's veneer, right? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Veneer is a, a fake wood on top of particle board. <laughs> Vayner. Yeah. Um, I might have to edit this one part out. I'm just looking at this note. Uh oh. It's a good thing we're not doing this live. <laughs> Was I just talking for like 20 minutes straight? Uh, pretty close. Okay. <laughs> just let me know if i'm no, like no, it's okay i interrupted a couple of times but nothing because there was a couple times in there was like uh what am i talking too much no, you're on the just, right no you're on I the right track you're all yeah you're following it yeah i just don't want to like feel like i'm rushing through the material no not at all mm. you're right on point okay everything it's all from what i understand you're right you're right there okay so back in now since Osser time the period before the ragnarok uh, these, like I said before, the concentric ring circles were all over the earth. And so this is one of the reasons I personally think people keep finding different spots where Atlantis was because mm -hmm. Atlantis it changed is like a ring city and stuff. Yeah. And then I find that whole concept that Atlantis uh, that sort of comes from this, like it ties so many things together. It's like you said, kind of near the introduction about mm -hmm. how like how other regimes like the nazis for example like had this whole same belief system in like atlantis and this like this sort of primogenitor place that where people came from like it's it's really interesting so it's, it's weird that it all ties back to this anyway sorry i just find it it's fascinating no don't be sorry yeah it is yeah. fascinating like and like i said like the gl the glorious thing about the box saga is it just encapsulates everything like all yeah. this atlantis stuff like you're talking about like the nazis and stuff like there is one conspiracy theory about how Nazis came from the North Pole and stuff. And that would include right into this, whereas like Helsinki was actually what they're meaning when they're talking about the yeah. North Pole. And like, I want to know what type of technology they had. Mm -hmm. So, but, the, and then one question people might be asking is like, well, if they had all this super advanced technology, where is it? Where is it? where is it but what happened was when the time of the ice ended as it melted the glaciers went across the lands and scraped it up so it's it's like basically like why you have a giant rock in a big field was because a glacier picked up that rock slid across the gland and then just melted and that rock fell so yeah. what happened was when the ice age ended like twelve thousand years ago the ice walls around Helsinki also like liquefied. Yeah. And this is what they're talking about when Atlantis sunk. So yeah. now to get to this, you're kind of like back to Atlantis being a city. And that's why we don't have any of this Asser technology left that they were developing in there. So yeah, so Helsinki won. So the Bach family that was the ruling family behind this ice wall they had 12 boys and seven girls so 10 of the sons set out to meet with the 10 different races and the two brothers that were left off the oldest brother and the youngest brother sven went and started the swedish people and dom went and started the danish people that's why you were saying before that the root language is closest to, to swedish, swedish. Sven would have taken the root language with him to Sweden yeah. and set it up and then Dom and the Danish. So that's why Danish is also close, right? So yeah. if you look at that history, uh, Eeyore Bach is, what is he? He's a, he's a Danish born Swede. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. He's, he's tying the lore into the character that he is, that he is as well. So this is where, this is where it starts to get weirdly unbelievable. So Eeyore Bach <laughs> is the descendant of the danish swede which mm -hmm. is the two root people of this particular mythology so yeah so that's where it gets like he's he's making this about him as well so like i yeah. got this story you're not gonna believe says the danish swede so, but, <laughs> i mean i came from the people that started the world the swedes and the danes 
if you are presenting this oral history of the world you might as well make yourself a central figure you might as well put you in the story right mm -hmm. let's bring this back to me <laughs> <laughs> yes yes god and whatnot and people from all over but what about me and where do i fit well, let me tell you a tale okay so we're at an hour now and there's not much left so we could power through and probably do it in two hours or we could just split off like we could stop pretty quick and then start again as the second episode which i kind of want to do sure we can do that it gives us more time to go off and yeah because i feel like i kind of i don't know like i maybe didn't but i feel like i kind of rushed through that whole thing no, so you didn't rush through it at all it's You'll a perfect part out right yeah <laughs> okay, cool well now i want i want the audience to know that i feel like How, i rushed and i don't want to like i don't want this podcast of, to be a wall of me talking oh but but that's but that's why we're here <laughs> the, in the words of dale this is a famous dale thing this is you seeing how the sausage is made and it, <laughs> yeah. it, ain't, it ain't pretty how the fudge is packed how the fudge is packed <laughs> yeah oh, so but this is like, a perfect uh, spot okay. to um to sure, break off because we have atlanta like um the bach people behind the ice wall they this is when it stops so the ice wall melts helsinki gets wiped off the earth yep. again and which um, is also a, a coded piece for atlantis being sunk yeah and uh one thing that happened when the ice age ended we will talk more about this in the next episode i'm cool. guessing because this is where graham hancock comes in and the younger dryas thing oh so, yes actually we could talk about this because he hasn't really talked about it so we'll we'll, we'll i'll give you there's this guy named randall carlson okay. and he has this um theory as to what ended the ice age because when the ice age ended the sea level on the earth raised four raised 400 feet in basically like a thousand years or something i'm thinking he was saying okay. so randall carlson's theory of what happened was as earth was going through was it called the perseid meteor ring which yeah. it does every six months because it it uh crosses over it two times in the yearly orbit yeah. and that's when you have the best meteor showers and stuff so what he's supposing is as earth was going through it picked up a lot of uh little comets and those comets struck the earth, but they hit the two mile thick ice sheet that is above the North Atlantic or the North America. Yep. So what he's saying is that the reason the ice age just ended so fast was because there's all these comet strikes and that basically vaporized and melted all the glaciers in North America. And this could actually be another reason why we don't see Astro technology was because this, the second, this is also considered the second Ragnarok. Right. So, so when this wiped happened, out all the technology. Yeah. And because most people live close to the sea or whatever, if the level's going up 400 feet, you can imagine how far inland it would go. Yeah, so very, very far. Every coastal city would have just got wiped out yeah. or not wiped out, but they would have been, yeah, because there would have been like, basically a tidal wave going over it and it yeah. would have wiped out all their buildings and this is when all the megafauna in north america were killed like woolly mammoths saber-toothed yeah. tigers be they didn't make it through this because it was basically flooding that last like thousand baby. years yeah. yeah extinction level event extinction level event and the reason why humans i guess lived through this was because they were living in a boat that noah made yeah, in an, <laughs> an arc, if you will. Yeah, yeah. So totally. this is like the flood myth that's in like the Epic of Gilgamesh and the it's Bible in and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So this is a good spot to end. Yeah. Okay. Right on. And this will give me time to watch Graham Hancock and maybe, if I get a chance, go back yeah. and watch. Uh, oh my God, what was the movie we were just talking about? That's not Armageddon. That came out at the same time. Deep, Deep Impact. impact. <laughs> It'll give for that, some time for the L reference I made. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we don't have to end it. Like, uh, is there anything you want to talk about that we covered already? No, man. I think I'm good right now. That'll okay. just. Uh, I'm just gonna put a note in my notes. Yes, yeah, a note in your notes. Notable notes of notes. Where? Of no, yeah, I think right this is here. a good place. This is a good place to stop off today, and then we can uh, get back on mm -hmm. next week. That's yeah, a because plan. I don't want it to be because this is such a big thing. I don't want it to be 
me just spouting all this stuff. No, and that's then, fine. Um, like it being too much to digest. Like what we already gave you was a lot to digest. It's a lot. Too. Yeah. And it's a big topic, but I think you nailed most of the pieces that needed to be hit, right? We've got yeah. the root language part. We've got the sort of origin story. We've got the mm -hmm. Ragnarok. We've got the, um, or the second Ragnarok. And we've got the, the, the basic gist of where and what is going on. So now you know we what we should talk about and talk about the oral history part. What's that? We should talk about some of the crazy ass shit that these guys oh. were talking about in the box. Yeah, in the, in because the, yeah. in my narrative through line, I left out, like Jeff was saying, when I started talking about the sperm, he's like, oh, you're not going to get into this. <laughs> you? Cause it's like, you got to drink it, Dale. You got to drink it. <laughs> the way they talk about it, you're crazy. Uh -huh. And there's this other thing that happened that is wild because um i I'm love this up. leave it for the cliffhanger for for next time um, Give no we're going to talk about this oh, point about now okay we're going to go back oh, because next episode is going to be ragnarok 2 forward okay. so we're going to talk about some of the shit we just skipped over because it was too nuts to talk about it's too nuts but since we have some extra time all right i'm going to tell you about one goat and Ooh, one monkey go. oh boy that Hold on to Add your hat. Some time. Hold on to your tinfoil hats. Here we go. This is wild because this is one of those things about the box saga where you're like, it's easy to convince people that it's like this alternate timeline of what happened before 12,000 years ago. And maybe like you can maybe convince them that Helsinki was behind an ice wall because the Gulf Stream kind of warmed it with this like swirling warm air. Well, this is the stuff you can't convince people. And you should not tell most people you know because there's some conspiracy topics that you can't tell normies because it just makes you look crazy because yeah. it's fucking crazy shit so once again conspiracy enthusiast yeah there you go not so creating what... <laughs> the theories spouting the, <laughs> yeah, but supporting just, the theories i'm just telling you what they just told presenting me he's presenting the, the topics yeah so what they're saying was I don't know. They didn't specifically say when this happened, but I think it was like right after the ice happened or was no, it must have been before. So this might have been sometime nearly 50,000 years ago. Apparently in the box saga, there's this like story about how kind of life finds a way from Jurassic Park, like when the fucking frogs change sex and started having sex with dinosaurs and they made baby dinosaurs. I can't really remember what I remember. The whole yeah no, thing was yeah. but just think of jeff goldblum being like life finds a way life uh, finds a way that's <laughs> so, more kramer than jeff goldblum <laughs> <laughs> one of the things about this uh helsinki and stuff and how the root language is like how it's a circle is also represented in the earth so like jeff was saying it starts with the tree yggdrasil so this is like a lowercase i, which is the e before ABC. It starts with e, and that's the lowercase i. So the i, the bottom part, there's like this chamber in Helsinki somewhere that is a pit that um, this is, uh, and they like, they say, I was, I was going to talk about this later maybe, but this is also... They like the Bach family from after the second Ragnarok. They are during, before that too, they would go down this pit and then they would, um, they would build a chamber and the Bach who was in charge for that generation would fill it with gold. And then they would just build every time. And then when that guy died and a new King started or a new Bach, they would build another thing and fill that with gold. But anyway, so this big column that is, the base of the eye and the, the dot of the eye is the North star, whatever would have been the North star back then that they worship. So there's this point where humanity had failed or something or, Oh no, this is how humans got made. Sorry. Right. I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. That, that's, that's Bob Saga does that to the course. It does. <laughs> I've, it's going to be funny. Cause I'm going to listen back to this when I'm editing it. And it's just going to sound like gibberish. And I'm going to be like, Oh no. 
it happened to us person. too. We tried. <laughs> you made notes and like tried to keep it organized, and it does. It, yeah. it can't. You can't with this. It skips oh, yeah. everywhere, and it's and so, it's, it's yeah. rich in details. But as soon as I get off those notes, yeah, and then know. I'm like, it's I don't want to just bring up specific stuff. Sorry. Yeah. So I've been edging you on this monkey. <laughs> Please tell us how you're edging us. So <laughs> this holy place, the Holy of Holies, which is the chamber of the eye. That's what I, that's the reason I brought it back up. Apparently before it was dug down into a col column, it was just like this holy pit where like, I guess maybe some sort of like cosmic energy was pooling in this or like God put some stuff in this. So humans were formed by a goat and a gorilla I don't, I don't know why i think gorilla they just said monkey but i think monkey. gorilla. they said monkey but you're going gorilla because okay. because it's a powerful it's so you're assuming that the goat is the receiver on this i don't know i'm trying to think of <laughs> think, which way hey is better and it's funny because i think of this as two cartoon characters like of it's, course you do <laughs> to me it's funny because it's easier than thinking of intersex bestiality yeah to me, it's funnier if it's a fully it cognizant people. monkey woman who talks and the goat is also cognizant. But Why for some reason, yeah. when the lesser being is the aggressor for the way sex works, it's less offensive to me. Like if you're talking about a monkey funk <laughs> fucking a goat, I'm like, oh, that's gross. But you but think about it's a more goat possible. fucking a monkey, it's a monkey somehow less bad yeah maybe she embraced the goat you know just bit on his fur i don't know so anyways yeah. what they're know. saying is the reason that I fucking lost it i can't i can't with you okay. on that one so the monkey fucks the goat and okay that's what's happening yes that it doesn't be... go straight to humans it goes to the pan thing where you have the human with the goat legs oh and yeah so like the guy who plays the flute, like Hercules yeah. gold cartoon, the guy. Herc, Herc, hey, Herc, look yeah. up here, look up here. <laughs> and that thing, <laughs> that thing apparently, I guess maybe they humped more monkeys as okay. it went along and got know. more human. I don't know how mixing a goat with a monkey makes a human. That doesn't make sense to me because you figure you would just have a monkey goat. I guess maybe it is, I don't know. What they should have said was a monkey and a pig. Because yeah. humans and pigs are more related than humans and goats. And humans are actually sometimes called long pig. No, oh, no, they're not sometimes called long pig. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's like, don't get into this. Oh, now boy, we're, we we're completely off the rails. Yeah. But anyways, if I'm making up a story. <laughs> Of breeding a monkey with another animal to it's make probably it not going to be a goat. Yeah, it'll be I'm going with similar. pigs. Yeah, that would make more sense. Anyway, so these two animals have sex. They make this horrible offspring that's some monstrosity, and that turns into humans. And this is why how monkeys and humans like there's this thing where it's like they're related and they both evolved from the same species but they don't have the missing link from where the two geneal genealogical chains mixed also if you listen to the old episode alien hybrids that's because the aliens uh messed with the dna of monkeys and made humans i like that theory better than this go fuck oh monkey personally it's a newton so from the mighty Hercules, the pan character that said everything twice hey Herc, hey Herc, look up here look up here his name was yeah his name, his name <laughs> is Newton. Yeah. And then he had a little, a little one called Pan and Pan didn't talk, but just played a flute Ooh. and it was the same notes every episode. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I remember being a little kid and not liking that cartoon. It's oh, it's terrible. Like, oh, I, it's yeah. Cartoon. He puts on that ring and it's basically like the origins of He-Man. He puts on the ring and then he holds the yeah. ring up high and it gets uh zeus's lightning bolts go into him and then hercules <laughs> becomes all powerful it's got that little tunic on yeah oh, i'm very confused right now uh the worst part <laughs> about this monkey fucking the goat story you still love it. would be hearing it from your sister mom yeah 
<laughs> for those two see. hours of homework you had to do every day. <laughs> could you imagine how two hours derailed? Of family story. <laughs> I, I couldn't even imagine sitting down with my son and going, okay, look, today we're going to spend two hours after school talking about our family history and he'd be like yeah fuck this, fuck this. i'm gonna go play roblox <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the funny thing was it's like you wouldn't even just go through the cool like here's the city behind the ice wall yeah. you would have to go through the drinking sperm thing the drinking sperm the people yeah. are plants the also, fucking monkey when i die goat. you have to fill a pit full of gold <laughs> yeah i've been filling this pit full i've been of filling gold. this pit full of gold in the backyard <laughs> oh and by the way you're not fucking getting that gold. You're going to yeah. leave you're that gonna, in the cave. And, and not only do you on top of it. get that, you got to dig go deeper. You got to seal that chamber off. Yeah. Put a gold statue of me. So you yeah. remember me Never every time it. you go down. And you got to fucking dig your own hole. Yeah. And fill that with gold. Oh, also, since we're about 30 generations in, you got to walk past 30 different gold statues and yeah. go 30 chambers deep. Totally. Yeah, he's be like, "What are you even talking about?" He's like, dad, you got to stop hanging out with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, the monkey fucking a goat thing. I just still, like they said that on the podcast. Yeah. Like, I don't even know if I want to talk. I didn't want to talk about it, I but I had to bring it up. You had to bring it up. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's that's a tough one because I'm like still I'm not sure who the uh, who's the top and who's the bottom in that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And it kind of like. like just wrecks this whole box saga thing it does because it, it like it de- it, i see what you mean because it delegitimizes it i mean like there might be so the only thing i can think of with any sort of convincing reality is that when they're talking about a goat they're not necessarily talking about a goat as we know it mm. they're talking about something similar to a pen or something similar to a, a i don't even know what it's called a goat centaur whatever that is Something I that's think, a little bit more human, maybe. What's it called? There's a there's a fucking word for it. Oh, there totally is. Ah, uh, let me look it up. I'll see. I'll race you. Let's see who can look up stuff faster. <laughs> uh, what is a goat centaur called? Half man, half goat man, half man. Oh, a fawn. The goat man. It's a fawn, F A U N, or a faunus in Latin. Yeah. All right. Faunus? That makes sense. What? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and like we were talking about before, yeah, because I don't even know if this is in my notes when we were talking about how hell means health for the box saga, yeah. but then when the Catholic Church came in, which is the third Ragnarok, but we'll get it to that later, they kind of reversed everything that was good to make it mean bad so people wouldn't believe this. They're like, hey, remember when that goat fucked a monkey and you all believe that? Well, we're just making hell being a bad place <laughs> okay hold People on like, oh okay now now i'm thinking yeah so the fawn is basically a half human half goat mm-hmm. right yeah so if a monkey fucked a goat you get a fawn and then they eventually breed out the the goat part and we become mm-hmm. more monkey goat Okay, I can see that. Yeah. I could. So now that I've like looked at a picture of the fawn. And yeah, like if the fawn. More, can... Oh, here's a good question. Okay. Hook you got up. a fawn that's a half man, half goat. So it got a goat penis or a man penis? All of the imagery <laughs> would say that it would. It's. It's oddly sexual in nature. It all goes down into a V and then becomes a goat. And there's like no, there's no like in every picture, it's these these lustrous abdomen muscles that go down into fur. So I guess we'll never know. And yeah. I think maybe that's the that's the catch right there. Of we'll course, all the we'll fans have rock hard abs, rock hard abs, big cum gutters that just yeah. go into fur. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and then you'll never know what's, what's nestled under that fur pelt. <laughs> if it's a giant swinging man dick or a little teeny yeah. goat knocker. And what I was, tr- what I was going to say about everything, everything being reversed, this might be why you have the goat as a symbol, symbol for Satanism and like Baphomet and stuff right. is because the, Catholic Church would have tried to make people stop liking the fawns. 
and seems so, so, bad. When you said the Fonz like that, I just pictured Fonzie from Happy Days. Hey! <laughs> God doesn't hey. like me. <laughs> Did the Fonz hey, ever wear again. shorts? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I heard he had a little tiny goat dick. <laughs> oh my god. That's no good. Hey. No. <laughs> now is, are there female fawns or only male fawns? Now I got now I'm Google, my Googles have gone crazy. Do you think they had like a little girt a girt, girt a little girt, goat a girt, girt. fur bikini? It looks like it. I mean, really? The problem with the problem with uh, historical recreation fan art is that the... it's always so horny. It's always so horny. It's always so horny. <laughs> not, there's not a single one of these. It's like a regular person. It's just like a hot half woman, half goat picture. There's no like, and yeah, she has a fur top on or leaves. Fur and leaves are the two tops of choice. The ones that I don't understand are leather, because then you're effectively cannibalizing your own race's skin to make a top to cover your fawn knockers. I just realized something. There is What's that? there is the half man, half goat the other way, and that's called a satyr. Oh, satyr. a satyr. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So you have a whoa, fawn whoa, whoa. and a satyr. Human bottom and a goat top? No, I think it's just like I thought. Say there was something else, like a ha- uh... oh, it looks like it's the same thing. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, it's the same thing. Welcome back to Dale and Jeff. Google Google horny pictures of Seder <laughs> of fawns on the internet. Anyway, I gotta go suddenly. <laughs> yeah, <Speaking>. yeah. <laughs> I'll be I right it's... back. I just discovered a kink I didn't know I had. Yeah, I think it's the same thing, but sometimes a satyr will have a goat head. Yeah, totally. I'm gonna, hold on, I got this thing my wife has to wear. I got to order it off Amazon. Right now. <laughs> right. Right. Be right back. This is new. This is new and exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Me. Then she'll be like, "You have to stop hanging out with Dale." <laughs> <laughs> you guys aren't allowed to talk. You guys about aren't fucking... allowed to talk about goat, horny goat people anymore. Goats, fucking monkeys, for <laughs> an hour or half yeah. an hour. You're not allowed to. You're not allowed. Mm-hmm. To. All right, let's call. <laughs> let's let's call it here before this goes down a dark hole. I think and it already went down a dark. It'll hole. give us time to research whether or not a fawn has a male pe- or like a human penis, or if it has a goat penis. Also. I'm going to have to scrub my browser history because I had to look up what a goat penis looks like for science. <laughs> did you? I did. That's, I'd imagine, what does it look like? Does it look like a cow uh, penis or like a no, dog penis? I'm thinking dog for some it's reason. There, it's, uh, it's more like a yeah, dog. Yeah. I'm going to Google yeah. it. Just Google it. Goat. It's, it's little. They're little and they're skinny and they retract and it's kind of curly. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Oh. It's very strange. It's long and skinny. Has a, like a head with a little wisp on the end of it. It's very strange. Why would you show me a picture of an elephant dick? That's not what I googled. I mean, it's not it looks what like, I want to see. Yeah, they're weird. They're, they're 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 as weird as you think. Yeah, I shouldn't have googled that. You shouldn't have googled that. No, you should just let me do the googling because like, now I have to burn my laptop. <laughs> now you have to burn it. You have to throw it in the ocean. That's the end of it. The laptop's going in the sea. <laughs> hey, so weird side note my laptop is an acer <laughs> Oscar mine <laptop>. too <laughs> so the technology wasn't lost they made laptops for everyone yeah and yeah. like ericsson comes from the slavic yeah. countries too doesn't it or wait so, is slavic so, the same as no slavic is not the same slavic is uh eastern european oh it's like as, poland and stuff yeah right? it's poland and yeah russia and, and, and that that the in between in between europe and russia that's that area in there okay what are these countries nordic oh. nordic countries really? yeah so yeah that's what ericsson like the cell phone company and bluetooth is also uh that and nokia they're the nokia is a finnish company all the communications companies are all uh, i thought nokia was japanese no Holy dude it's finnish look it up yeah and like yeah no. bluetooth is bluetooth comes from uh from like literally it's harold bluetooth which is like one, one of the and the symbol is runes it's it's literally yeah. like yeah it's the b ruin mixed with something else yeah with the t ruin. yeah bluetooth anyway it's, oh. yeah so like and yeah nokia is a finnish company so like a lot of the cellular technology and like all the technology that we use comes from sweden and finland 
that's kind of weird like to think that it all comes from there because it's like you think cellular and like technology and all that stuff and you kind of forget that like in the 80s and early 90s like nordic countries were the top of the like line for like like blau punk spare stereos yeah, and stuff. stereos yeah. and was, was fosdale German. from there rockford fosdale? rockford fosgate no that's american mm. rockford fosgate they're american yeah they currently do the systems on harley davidson motorcycles that's the whole jam mm. yeah yeah i haven't seen that logo in a while but go look at a harley davidson dealership that's what the, <laughs> that's what the speakers are that come in the bikes oh yeah that always I was always like, why is there speakers on a motorbike? It just seems like I can you tell you from experience because I literally have them on my motorcycle. I have a yeah. fully enclosed helmet and I have speakers in the dashboard of my motorbike and you can't hear shit unless it's yeah. cranked. And if it's cranked, it sounds terrible. So <laughs> it's, not, it's for the dudes with the half helmet and a goatee ripping uh, around on their bike going to Daytona. And to yeah. <laughs> people around them yeah. to be like, this is the music I'm listening to. In order to, to hear it, you have to have it up so loud that you'd be embarrassed to have ACDC crank that loud when you pull up at a stoplight. <laughs> so, yeah. Or, uh, you know. Yeah. Anyway, we should cut it off there. Yes, we should. Let's call We're that tonight. Hour and 20. That was good. I think that was a good episode today. And I yeah. think uh, that we've got a little bit more to discuss on this in, in a week's time. And I'm going to watch that Graham Hancock show. I'm going to get a start on that tonight it's good it's definitely good everybody should actually go watch ancient apocalypse even aside from this it just talks about the whole like oh i guess we could kind of i'll I'll talk about it next time it's too late to get back into it yeah yeah Yeah. but his his whole theory is like ten thousand eight hundred years ago or whatever there was an advanced society that taught everybody how to build all the monoliths and temples that they built, like the pyramids and Gobekli yeah. Tepe and all that stuff. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So uh, thank you for joining us on the Dale Show. I've yeah. been your co-host, Jeff. And with me, as always, is Dale. And we'll see you on the internet. Yeah, son. Yeah, uh, yeah the Dale Show. Um, From the Outrage uh, Factory Fine Group of Podcasts. Yeah, you can find us on YouTube. Just uh, search uh, The Dale Show. Uh, I have a Patreon. It's just The Dale Show. Um, I don't have a specified email for this, but if you go to OutrageFactPod Gmail, I'll get all the the messages there. If you want any swag, like these sweet, sweet mugs, just mention it in the comments. I will see it and I will get back to you um if you're listening to this on audio i don't know how many visual pictures i'm going to put in on this one but i'll try to put i usually try to put some and then you can see mine and jeff's lovely faces whenever i make dumb faces when i'm trying to mispronounce words and such my favorite Um, face of yours is when you're looking when you're reading from wikipedia and you get super close to the camera and you're like (laughs) Anyway, and you try to say a German word, and you're like, Gish Nursch Yeah. That's my favorite word. Yeah, Alphurnus. <laughs> Newt Canute. Newt Canute. <laughs> yeah. My favorite. Uh, yeah. That's it. If you want to find me on Twitter before it dies, I'm at Mr. Goats, but who the hell cares? <laughs> oh, I'm Super Dale Bot. Uh, yeah. All right. We'll catch you later. See you on the internet. Get you later. Hopefully I'll have a beard next episode. <laughs> Sweet. Hey, nice mug. Thank you. TDS. 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 Baby. <laughs> <laughs> As always, I have my oh, this is an important service announcement for our Dale Show merchandise right here. Mm-hmm. These mugs, what size are they, Dale? 16 ounce. 16 ounces. It fits a can of your choice of beverage. In this case, Happy Camper Lemon Lime Soda from Great Western Family uh, fully and completely holds a can of liquid. Oh, so it holds 350 milliliters instead of like 250, like a regular Correct. mug? That's right. 355 milliliters of liquid and two ice cubes. Which is good because if you're drinking a lot of uh, apple soda like I am this time, you want to get as much as you can. So what's with the apple cider? Does this have anything to do with the box saga research that you came up with? <laughs> no, I just, just I feel like apple cider will make you from hell. 
Uh, no, I literally saw some at the grocery store. I was like, Ooh, apple cider. It's Christmas. <laughs> Get my apple cider on. Yeah, that's fair. I had some, yeah. uh, coconut eggnog the other day. I guess it's not eggnog. It's simply coconut nog with coconut milk. Yeah. It's pretty terrific. Do they call that stuff holiday nog? They call it, they call it coconut nog. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's like, it's basically the spices of, uh, of eggnog, but with the, with not the shitting your pants of lactose intolerance. It's beautiful. Mm, does it have egg in it still or it no? It has no egg in it. No, it's just like a nice creamy coconut consistency oh. with the, with the nice spices in it. It's awesome. It's so oh, nice. good. I can't, I can't recommend it enough. I got uh eggnog ice cream and oh, it's dope. all cream and all egg. So <laughs> nice. shit yeah. your pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shit your pants. That's shit your pants ice cream. Okay. Man, I'm stoked for the holiday season this year. It'll be good. I can't oh, wait. I'm pumped. I'm excited. I actually have the Christmas spirit this year. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.